Welcome to the last video in this short series on creating a die set. We recommend you watch the videos in order, so go to the first if you haven't seen that one yet. We wish to thank you for your interest shown in Symmetron and hope you will search out other videos in this series. This video continues where the last left off. We will finish adding the pins to the die set and make them responsive. Now we can place in some components. Hide the die and stripper assemblies and make the punch side active. We'll start by placing screws and dowels and build from there. Click assembly, add from catalog, and browse the extensive list of supplier catalogs that we have available that are provided with the system. You might need to install these from the Symmetron control panel. You can also access custom catalogs and custom assembly catalogs that you create. There is a folder named Standard Parts where we keep the frequently used screws and dowels. We recommend you install this. Select a metric screw and pick by diameter and length. In this image, they are the red dimensions. Pick an 8mm screw and pick 50mm as the length. But we will change this length later in the exercise to use a relationship. We will place these screws on the face of the punch plate, so zoom into the plate for a better view. Components are placed using the sketcher. This means we can change the setting to accurately represent the size of the component. Change the selection here from free to dimension and set the diameter to 8. We'll do a 6 screw pattern. The horizontal and vertical guides show the cursor position relative to the previous screw locations, so we know they are aligned. To position the screws on the plate, pick the outer edges as the references. Dimension the screws from the corners as opposed to from the center. This is to maintain the position of the screws in the corner if the plate size changes. Choose a simple value, such as 25. Dimension the center hole from the edge. Later, we will make it a relationship to the side of the plate. Repeat the process to keep the holes relative to the other edges. The pink dot in the center of the screw is telling you that it is located correctly. Remember to click OK. We talked about the aim of controlling dimensions with relationships, so let's link that dimension to something in setup. It needs to be half of the die steel length, so add that formula in there. If it is difficult to read, you can stretch the window wider. Type in the set of parentheses to enclose that value and divide it by 2. With this formula, the screw will always be in the center of the plate. Click OK and now let's make sure the screw is the correct length. Double click the screw. Find the length value. And click to show the dimension dialog. We can build the formula to control that length here by clicking the formula button. The screw must go through the punch plate and the backup plate so we click both of those values. And we can add a nominal value to ensure it is seated. Because it's a catalog component, it will always pick the nearest catalog size. If the plate thicknesses change, the screw length will update to the nearest suitable size. Let's add a dowel pin from our catalog. We place it using the same method. Find a diameter and pick a temporary length, because I will create a relationship for this too.
In this case, we will position this near the corner and dimension it from the corner. Select the main plate and place two of them near the corner screws. Place them roughly where we want them and then we can adjust the positioning. Select the size as references and this time we will dimension the dowel location from the corner. Set these so they are 25 millimeters from the size and 45 millimeters in from the top and bottom edges. Simatron dynamically updates as you enter the values to make it easier to visualize. When all the dimensions are added, rotate the part to check they are what you want. With the pin in position, let's set the length and position it by altering the Z up, Z down. Using the optional step in the feature guide, Symmetron can move a component by a delta distance relative to any given point. By changing these values, we can make the pin central to the plate thickness. Later, we will link that length to plate thickness. We need to place a guide pin in bushing but we currently don't have enough width on the margins. Because we are confident in the formulas we have created, we can open the setup and change those margins we have set. Make them 150 millimeters. I need space at the end too, so let's update the strip start, which controls the margin on the length. Make that 100 millimeters. Now we will add the guide pins. Here are all the catalogs from our different suppliers. I'll pick a standard component and we can start with our guide pins. Notice that this example comes with the demountable screws in the component. Pick the diameter. And pick the mating side of the punch shoe. Roughly position four pins on the face. The horizontal and vertical guides help you keep things lined up. Pick the outer edges of the plate as the references for the dimensions. This way, if the shoes change size, those guide pins will stay in the corners. Added dimension. Eighty does not look right, so let's try sixty. This is the benefit of having the on screen elements dynamically update. Remember those guidelines that came up when we were placing the guide pins. Simatron recognized you wanted these pins to line up and so it has applied the same left dimension to this component because we used the guide to set the object down. This will speed the process up. All we need to do now is to find the distance from the right hand edge. But what if we want one of them to be offset? Let's move the upper left pin. We can position these as different components or we can position them with different control. Click the optional step button to move the item using delta distance over. But notice it's moving both of these on the left because the constraint is binding them. We need to ungroup these by going from group control to individual control. Now we can pick that single guide pin and move that over. You can drag it or type in the value that you want. We'll move it over 10 millimeters and click OK. Simatron positions the component and it creates the holes for the screws and the guide pin.
Right click and edit the feature so we can rotate these pins to move the screw and clamp away from the direction of the coil. We'll use the optional step in the feature guide to rotate these 45 degrees. We will edit each one in individual control, but you can also do this under the group control. Notice the cuts all updated and moved to the correct position. Next, we will build a relationship to set the appropriate length for our guide posts. Make the die and stripper assemblies visible again and zoom in here. You see the guide post is long enough, but it should always be the first thing to enter into the die side by at least a diameter and a half. Open the setup and create a folder named Guide Pins. Create variables to control the diameter and the length. Edit the diameter to set up a lookup that is going to be based on a list in the catalog. Change the type from value to from list. Click edit and mark the from catalog checkbox. Then click the list selection button. Find your catalog item and click select. Pick which factor will populate your list. We now know this component can be ordered at that particular diameter. Now that is in setup, we can link to it from the model. Activate the pin. Find the dimension. Open the setup table from the dialog. And pick my value from the guide pin section. Click OK and you can see they all updated. Open Setup again so we can build a formula for the length. This needs to be the height of all the different components. So we need the plates, punch backup, the closed gap, stripper plates, and coil thickness. By linking these values in a formula, we know the pin will be the correct length if any of these values change. Add all the punch plate values, including the punch backup plate, the closed gap, the stripper plate thicknesses, and the coil thickness individually to the formula field with a plus symbol between each one. We need a margin. So to keep everything responsive, we will add that to the formula. Add plus 1.5 times the diameter of the guide pin in parenthesis at the end of the formula. This gives us a minimum length we need. But that might not be the length of a standard pin. so we can effectively look up the nearest viable value using the Buy List option. Select the Guide Post Catalog. Select the factor to use. We know it's not the diameter, but is L the length I want? Let's check in this catalog. When you create your own custom catalog, it is important to also create these reference images. The preview image shows F1 is the actual factor that we need. Let's select F1 and click OK. Symmetron will select the nearest value. 
but that won't work if that nearest value is shorter than I need, so select the upper nearest. Click OK. Finally, assign the length to the value in setup. We could go further, such as we can make the plate thickness drive the diameter of your bushing. Open setup and find the guide pin diameter, and let's make this a formula. We'll start from the punch shoe thickness. Let's set it up so that this value is rounded to the diameter of the pin. So round by list. Find the guide pin catalog. and use the diameter. We will round to nearest. Click OK. Now if the plate thickness changes, the pin diameter will change to the nearest value within that catalog. Now we'll place the catalog bushing. Make the die side active and select Assembly Add from Catalog and browse to the catalog of demountable bushings. You can see all the parameters for this bushing. You see the screws and clamps already there as well. Pick the diameter and the length you want. These can be linked in with formulas later. These go on the mating face of our die shoe and we can use the geometry from the holes that were created when we placed the pins. That way, everything stays in line. The bushing is positioned exactly where it needs to go on top of the shoe. From there, we can adjust the position. Remember we want to rotate those so that the screw holes and clamps are not in line with the coil. Notice that on this occasion we used group control and all the bushings rotated simultaneously. Thank you for reviewing this presentation. We hope you have found this series of videos informative and hope you will search for other videos about Symmetron.